Rock group Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young sang their famous lyrics, Teach Your Children Well. Singer David Crosby still had some life lessons of his own to learn, tough ones at that. In the first of two parts of an exclusive and an extremely personal interview with Chantal, David Crosby speaks out about his recent near-death experience. David, you're out of the hospital. Are you out of the woods? No, I'm not out of the woods. I, you don't ever really permanently get out of the woods. You're always at risk because uh, you have uh, no immune system anymore. You've got a, a suppressed immune system. Mm -hmm. So the first really nasty bug that came along and was really resistant that you couldn't kill with antibiotics would kill you. Um, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. what I am is alive, you know, today. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who said, now you really know about one day at a time. And it was a long 39 days that David Crosby lay dying at UCLA Medical Center, waiting for a liver to replace his own. You can die. You, know, you can quit. And despite the fact that he was nine years sober after a lifetime of much publicized drug use, his liver had still failed him, partly from long-term abuse and partly from diabetes and hepatitis C. If just last year, David was touring with Crosby, Stills and Nash, and everything changed with a doctor's visit. They did a full workup on me, and they said, David, uh, I said, come on, you know, tell me the truth. They said, okay, well, you're going to die if you don't get a transplant. Immediately. Ugh. After you've been through all the stuff I've been through, you tend to think, you know, okay, you know, I've paid my dues, you know, now I'm going to have a free run, you know. And it didn't work out like that. What was the hospital experience like? I'm actually still trying to sort out the whole experience. Uh, it's, uh, it's such a, a drastic uh, operation. I mean, they cut me almost in half. Mm -hmm. And then opened me up like a flower and moved stuff around, you know, to get it out of the way and mm -hmm. take the liver out. The, the biggest change that happened immediately when I had the transplant was... I still feel, you know, like I got center punched by a little motorcycle or something right about here. But I don't feel like I'm dying anymore. I, the, there was this slow, incremental progress towards a full stop mm -hmm. that your body was telling you was going on. And I was in denial about it, but mm -hmm. subconsciously I knew that mm -hmm. I was, you know, going down this very short road with a big cliff on the end. You're in a hospital. You're waiting for an organ transplant. And some people might say, well, he's a celebrity. He's going to get it before anybody else. I think some people did say that, and I'm sure some people think that. They avoid uh, even telling people how they prioritize it because they don't want to be manipulated and they don't want to do it unfairly. They're scrupulous about it. They did change my status because uh, they didn't think I'd live long enough <laughs> to get a transplant. You got sober in 1985, I believe, right? Part of this damage to your liver is because of your abuce. Are it there... certainly exacerbated it. Exacerbated it. it. Do you think there are people who say, hey, he messed this up with drugs and alcohol. Why should he get a new liver? I know there are people who have said that. You think um, so? Uh, yeah. And there are a number of people that that they have turned down because the people have not made any, you know, credible effort to straighten their lives out. Mm -hmm. You know, they look at Jan and I, you know, well, it's nine years later, these people are still straight, you know. Uh, the, we can believe that they're not going to take mm -hmm. this new liver and take it as license to go out and get loaded because, oh boy, now I've got one that works. Do you want to do things differently than you did them before? Do you want to say, yeah. I, wa I want to follow through and make that call and write that note? And I would love to... You know, be healthy. I never cared about being healthy before. Uh, I never thought I was going to live long enough. You know, I was a junkie and a doper, and I was going to die. That's what dopers do. You know, so I thought, well, okay, you know, I understand this. You know, uh, and I had accepted it. And now I have to accept the fact that I have been given, once again, another shot. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to take it lightly. I don't know what I did, to, you know, to deserve it. I don't know if I do deserve it. But uh, I'm immensely grateful for it. 
And by the way, David Crosby will be participating in an hour-long America Online Auditorium that begins at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And tomorrow, in part two of his conversation with Chantal, Crosby talks about the new life coming into his life, the little baby that he and his wife Jan are expecting. Chantal reports in the second part of an exclusive interview with the colorful musician and his wife. Crosby's music and his life are now in harmony. With Crosby, Stills, and Nash, the birds, and as a solo act, David Crosby has brought us beautiful music and harmonies for 30 years. Now, this troubadour has a new live CD called It's All Coming Back to Me Now. Almost cut my head. For the last 17 years, it's been Jan Crosby who's been David's inspiration. Last month, when he underwent a dangerous liver transplant, Jan was by his side. Man, she was so good. She was so strong. And, you know, she's pregnant. She's like four or five months pregnant now. And, uh, and we should be, you know, mm -hmm. centering on her, you know. Uh, but she just, you know, uh, was such a trooper and held my hand when I was, you know, completely lost and stuff. Now, Jan and David rent a ranch in Santa Ynez, California. We are in this beautiful house outside of Los Angeles. Now, the last time I visited you guys, you were in L.A. Did you come here for peace, for quiet? Actually, what happened is <clears throat> we had this beautiful house that you came to. And uh, we had an accountant who told us he'd paid our taxes and didn't. So one day the IRS showed up and started taking all the money that we had. Took our bank account, took... Uh, Knocked on your door. Yeah, and put a lien, the IRS. Yeah, and put a lien on, on my record money and publishing and everything. And uh, so we all of a sudden had no money. We've been broke ever since. And uh, so we lost that house. And... Uh, we were fighting to keep it, and then the earthquake came along and smashed it flat, and we said, well, it's not worth fighting for anymore. The truth is, you know, once again, we came up smelling like roses, because this place is heavenly. They've been trying to have a child for the past five years unsuccessfully. When the doctor finally told her that she was pregnant, it was only two months before David went into the hospital. We're really attached to each other, you know, so strongly, and the idea that I might not make it, you know, it's pretty devastating you know, to her, and, and, you know, as much as it is to me, neither one of us wants to live without the other one. And uh, to be given such a, an encouragement, you know, about there being a future and there being more to our lives, you know, to be given a gift like that at that moment, hmm. you know, it's just, it was a neat it's pretty present. hot. Yeah. How did you tell David you were going to have this baby? I screamed. I screamed really loudly. It was my 43rd birthday. And my doctor called me up and made sure I was sitting down and, and just said, Jan, you're pregnant. And I went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> We've been trying for so long, you know. You must be aware, with this new life beginning, at the same time, David's new life is beginning. Really? It gives me goosebumps to say it. Yeah, anybody who thinks God doesn't have a sense of humor just isn't watching, man. <laughs> Hi, you're going to die. Oh, and by the way, your wife's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> what does the future hold? What, what do you see for both of you now? Well, the big event is the child. And, and the gift of life. I mean, we, we each have one now. And uh, it's an amazing sensation to realize, how did I get this lucky? You know, it's... Mm -hmm. When I was in the hospital and I was around other people going through the same procedure on the family side of their loved ones having transplants, mm -hmm. I saw a world I'd never seen before. And it's a pretty scary place. Mm -hmm. And some of those people didn't make it. And I knew that he had. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a very compassionate soul. And it, I wanted to embrace them and help them somehow. And I guess I did in my way oh, yeah. do that. But it, it makes you stop and really count your blessings. I have to tell you, all the people who sent us both love and support and prayers and hope you have to know that uh, when you're lying there and it's three o'clock in the morning and you wonder if you're going to wake up the next day it really mattered it really really mattered and uh, and we love you for it thank you 
And as you might imagine, David Crosby wants all people to consider becoming organ donors.